Hello and welcome to the channel. If you are a regular to my channel, you know that I try to cover almost all the models which appear on Hugging Face or wherever they appear, whether they are closed source, open source, API based. And then we try to very fairly benchmark these models after locally installing them if possible and if my GPU allows. And then we go through it in bits and pieces to make sure that we cover every angle. I have already covered lots of models from Stability AI. Some of their models are quite good to be fair, but what one thing I have found out about Stability AI's model is that it is huge pain in the back to get them installed. It appears to me that they purposely try people um, so that people won't be able to install it locally properly. First and foremost, it requires a lot of GPU power and VRAM. Secondly, even if you have the required GPU, simply you would spend hours and hours to get it installed. Take an example of this brand new model from Stability AI, which is called as Stable Video 4D. The model looks really good if you look here, but I have spent 11 hours just today from uh, I guess 5 a.m. to now it is almost you know uh, evening here in Sydney that I have been just battling with this model and nothing else and eventually I was able to install it on my local system and I will also share all the command which I used and I will also show you uh, you know how it works but uh, even then the problem is that you don't get all the frames you only get you know a uh, few frames but you get the idea that how this works of course for a full blown conversion to 4d you would need a massive um, gpu cluster i think but uh, for starters i think it is a okay model now this stable video 4d is a generative model based on stable diffusion svd and stable diffusion video 3d which takes in a single view video of an object and generates multiple new view videos or 4D image matrix of that object. Another thing is that if you're an individual just playing around, uh, but if your revenue is more than, I guess, 1 million US dollars or organization, you need a commercial license. You simply cannot even install it locally. It's a video to video model. And this model is trained to generate 40 frames, which is five video frames into 10, into eight camera views at around 576 by 576 resolution, given five reference frame of the same size. And there are a few uh, examples which are scattered throughout their um, project page, which I will drop the link in video description. And it is, this is what I intend to do, that I will just give it a flag video and then it is going to generate this last video as a result. So this is what uh, we will be doing after installing it. Now, I have one GPU card of 48 GPU of VRAM and it was really pain in the back to get it working, but I will show you and plus it takes a long time to generate it. So anyway, I will uh, try to make it as short as possible because I don't want you to spend like 11 hours on this one. I don't think so it's worth it. So other than that, um, you could just check out this uh, sort of architecture and flow of it that you start with some reference videos or images and then you just use this SV4D model. It just converts it into video frames and then you get the generated 4D assets towards the end. And this uh, third row asset, sort of a triangle, is what we are going to check out shortly how to create it. So before I move forward, allow me to give a huge thanks to Mass Compute who are sponsoring this VM and GPU for this video. If you are looking to rent a GPU on affordable prices, I will drop the link to their website in video description. Plus, I'm also going to give you a coupon code of 50% discount on a range of GPUs. Okay, so that said and done, let me take you to my local system where I'm running Ubuntu 22.04 and I am running this GPU card which is NVIDIA RTX A6000 courtesy Mast Compute. So let me clear the screen. Make sure that you have Conda installed. It is extremely necessary for this one. Otherwise it won't work on your local system, I can assure you. Okay, so first let's me create this Conda environment and step into it. Okay, and one thing they don't mention is that the first thing you need to install is this Nickel library through Conda. I'm already in the Conda environment as you can see. 
Now this Nickel library or NCCL is a NVIDIA collective communication library. It is used for inter GPU communication primitives that are topology aware and can be easily integrated into applications. So make sure that you have installed it. Let me run it to install. Let's wait for it to finish. It is going to take a bit of a time. And this took me like hours and hours to find out. So let's wait for it to finish installing. And that is done. Let me clear the screen. And now I'm installing PyTorch, Torch Vision, Torch Audio and CPyTorch. So let's wait for it to finish and then I'll clear the screen. It is going to take a few minutes. And that is done too. Took like five minutes, but that's done. Also, next step, you would need to go to this GitHub repo of Stability AI and you will need to click on this code and grab this URL and let me take you to back to my terminal here you would need to run this git clone and then clone this repo and cd to it so let me do it and now we end we are in this repo next up you would need to install a lot of prerequisites which are these don't worry i'm going to put it in my blog everything all the steps and you can simply um, copy paste and run this so and i will drop the link in video description to that blog now let me install this these are going to take like 10 minutes so you just have to be patient there okay so that is done next step you would need to do is to create two folders checkpoints and also outputs now i already have created them so once you have them you would need to cd into checkpoints and here you would need to run wget and then let me take you to back to hugging face first you would need to go to this sv4d model go to files and make sure you are logged in there and from there click on the save tensors right click on this download copy link and then go back to your terminal and then put it here and then now just press enter and it is going to download it now before you do that, if you are not already logged into Hugging Face, let me show you how can you do that. So I already am logged in, but I'm let me quickly show you. It's not that hard. Um, or even let me actually let's forget about the download. I'll tell you easier way which I use. So I know that. Uh, sorry, this is what you need to run. Wget header authentication bearer this is your hugging face token and then the whole url which we have just copied that's it now before that of course you would need to just do export hf underscore token is equal to you would need to grab your token from hugging face let me take you to back you to hugging face and show you how to do that log into hugging face which is hugging face dot co click on your profile picture at the top right then in the access token click on create no to new token and then read and create a new token i already have it as you can see if i go to back to tokens i already have this read token and this is what i have already set in the party so once you have set it on as i said earlier all you need to do is to run that wget command as i said i'll put all of these commands in this one so not only that you would have to do the same thing for this as v4d model which i was referring to earlier but also you would need to go to this sv3d model too and then click on files go down and then grab this p1 or u1 so whatever um, i think i went with the u1 so just go with the u1 and then download this file by right clicking on it and then for that all you need to do is to go back to your checkpoint folder in your terminal and run these two commands and this is going to download it so let me run it and wait for them to get downloaded and there you go we already have downloaded both of these tensors and you would just have to wait for a bit and make sure that you have that that much space on your space on your disk so let me see how much space so make sure 20 gig is the size of both of them okay so this is all done now we have also created our output folder so what i'm going to do i'm just going to take you to maybe i'll go back one directory there is an assets directory if you do ls there are a few sample videos which they have given 
So I'm just going to use this sample text video one MP4, which is a flag, and we will convert it into sort of a 4D frame. Let me go back. Let's clear the screen and let me run the conversion script. And there you go. So this is a conversion script you need to run, which is again going into the uh, maybe I'll just because I'm in the root directory. Yes. So script sampling sample video. 4d.py it is going to use this input video test video one and it is going to put the uh, resultant video in my output directory as v 4d directory now this script is going to throw some warnings it is going to take long time so you just have to be patient so i will just let me let it run and then once i it finishes um, i will just take you to my local system so let's wait for it to finish Okay, so it finished, took long time, but now let me take you to my GUI. So this is where the test video is. Let me first play it. This is just a flag one. This is the input video and this is the output video, the text one. There you go. So 3D, 4D. And then the same thing, let me take you to output directory now where we will see just the output one. And this is the output one. If I just click here again, you will see that it is just going to show you that frame here. So this is my input. This is my output. Let me run it. That's it. So that's it, guys. I know that uh, this is um, not exactly the 4D which we were hoping, but that is, you know, SV4D for you. This is highly dependent on the GPUs. And I, um, this is what I was referring to that in order to get this sort of 4D output, you would need mega GPU cluster and you would have to wait for a long time. So, and then, you know, I think they can really improve their documentation plus their installation instructions. And um, even if we can generate the frame or 3D assets like which I generated, I think that shouldn't take like hours and hours of effort. And we shouldn't be downloading multiple models from multiple places. We shouldn't be really battling with all these uh, nickel libraries and all that stuff, which are quite obscure. Not everyone is aware of it. So if they really want masses to adopt these things, they really need to, I think, step up their game. Um, so that's it. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Uh, if you like the content, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you're already subscribed, please share it among your network as it helps a lot. Thanks for watching.